I think uh, a similar and related question uh, we have from Kelsey, and I'm going to let her take it away. And you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. I'm Kelsey. So I actually work for um, Minnesota Department of Health through the Statewide Health and Part Improvement Partnership. So Yay. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> something that just came out was uh, MDH wants us to focus on an equity lens and also is called out that what's going on in Minnesota is a public health crisis for racism and discrimination. So I think all of this is, like you said earlier, is a great opportunity for us to really start talking about equity. So I guess my question is, uh, can you talk more about One Minnesota and how that's addressing equity and how we can be a part of that? Sure. So I think just building on right that that last question, like how are disruptors and we're looking at these systems, but the, the governor and I, um, you know, one of the reasons why we actually decided to, to run together um, very early on um, was because we both have different perspectives. Uh, I do not know what it is like to be a, a, a football coach and teacher and command sergeant major who grew up in a rural community. Um, uh, I just don't know that. And he doesn't know what it means to be a native woman who lives in the Twin Cities, who works in nonprofits. So our powers combined um, is part of like why we talk about, about One Minnesota, that um, you know, different perspectives are what can help us get to um, better results for the, the state and our community overall. The, the first thing that we did uh, when we came into office, the first executive order was to establish the One Minnesota Council on Equity and Inclusion, which looks at uh, everything that we do through state government uh, to be more equitable. So it's, um, uh, our, uh, it's our, our state agency uh, commissioners who are part of that work. We have an advisory group as well uh, who is part of that. Um, and we have also added, as we're looking at our COVID response, we have work groups, of, of course, across like food security and um, uh, hospitalization. And, and so we get reports from each of these work groups, uh, Kelsey, as you know, um, and one of the, the work groups that we have also as part of that is our CRR work group, which is our community resiliency and recovery work group. Um, which was created because we know the communities of color are impacted um, uh, more substantially, frankly, than others by COVID-19. So looking at then this work group across the board to, to take a look at how are we um, investing? Where are we investing? Where do we need pop-up testing sites? Uh, you know, we've gotten feedback from the community that's like, this is great that, you know, there's testing in my community, but if I don't have transportation to get there, um, you know, what does that mean? And so, um, you know, we're, we're looking at that in our COVID response, but it's also been broadly part of our response, um, just part of our uh, administration overall. But this is, again, where we need to go deeper, which is beyond diversity, equity, and inclusion, and going to being an anti-racist office and enterprise. Um, and that's the, that is the hard part. Um, but we now have an anti-racism tool that everyone who has been part of our COVID response has, um, has learned, has gone through. We are making tweaks and improvements to then have that tool uh, be used across each state agency, especially as we're looking towards the 2021 session with both policy and budgets. And then how are we moving things internally within our own state agency? So for example, um, as we look at grants, grant making. Um, there are a lot of uh, policies and procedures that have been in place for a long time that don't actually work for our communities. Um, even if things weren't set in stone, um, it's like, oh, this is the way that we've always done it. And it is that sort of um, tradition that gets in the way of us being able to actually, you know, get what is the, the tradition versus what is the requirement? What are we actually trying to get to? And so that's, I think, a, a big thing that we are navigating through um, right now in real, in real time. Um, you know, we are on our state boards. Uh, we have over uh, 100 boards that we appoint, um, a whole bunch of stuff across the state and um, have men made more diverse appointments to those boards uh, than other administrations in the past, building on the good work that Governor Dayton did and we have to do so much more. I think what, if I can just be really honest with you, um, knowing that we have two and a half years uh, guaranteed that, you know, trying to push for as much change as possible within a system 
um, that was not uh, meant to move or, you know, easily, I think is, is one of the things that's been difficult, um, but also one of the things that is really important. We have our One Minnesota um, goals that we have set as well across, um, across all of our agencies that are grounded in, like, you know, uh, education, children, health, et cetera, but all of those have an equity lens um, and making sure that we are engaging people who are most impacted, but also setting some goals um, uh, to ensure that we are, are turning the curve in those measurements, uh, which is really important to, you know, you measure what you care about. And uh, so, you know, sometimes we see the data and it makes us uncomfortable because we are not making the strides that we want to make, but then that means that we have to go back and change it and switch it up. Um, so, you know, those are some of the things that, you know, that we are, are doing right now, but I'll just, uh, you know, I will also say every day when I'm in the office, I look outside of my window and there is a statue of Newt Nelson and Newt Nelson was the author of the Nelson Act, right, which uh, wanted to remove all Native people and put them on what is now the, the White Earth Reservation um, and, and uh, for the first Ojibwe Lieutenant Governor looking out the window, that's the statue that's right outside. Um, and so, you know, and every day when I walk into the Capitol, I take two deep breaths. One breath is just like an acknowledgement of the responsibility of being in this role. And the second breath is um, a breath of protection, to be honest, because I'm walking into a, a capital into a building that was not created by my community or for my community, but really was created uh, to exter exterminate my community. And so, you know, these are these are some of the things that we are functioning in um, every single day. And uh, being able to push and do this work, um, you know, there are days that I look at the Newt Nelson statue and I'm like, Newt Nelson. And there's other days where I'm like, what's up, Newt Nelson? <laughs> like, you know, like here I am in the Capitol making decisions. Um, and so, you know, I think that, uh, that that is just also just part of this is, is giving ourselves a little bit of grace as we're also trying to push and change these things that have been this way for quite some time. But also knowing when you are in a leadership role that you're trying to move and do everything you can possible within that window of time to make that change. And that's what the governor and I are trying to do even in the midst of, um, there's not a train that going past my house, right in the backyard. Um, uh, even in the midst of, when I say white supremacy, uh, I get feedback from uh, leaders uh, in the legislature who say, I shouldn't use such incendiary language because it doesn't allow us to have the kind of conversations we need to have. Or if we talk about racism, you know, do you really mean racism? Yes, I really mean racism. And so having also, um, also having, uh, I'm grateful also to have a partner in Governor Walls who's like, yeah, racism, we're gonna talk about it. Or we can't, you know, um, he also has been a co-conspirator um, on many of these things, knowing that the message sometimes has to come from him in a way that like those folks can't hear it from me and that's okay because um, we're still trying to, to get it right. Um, but those are some of the ways, and I would say the ways that you can be in engage, engaged and involved is as we are doing um, more of this work across the state, either virtually um, or in person, is to please show up. I think we have, you know, and we will make those invitations. Um, you know, we can absolutely, uh, you know, do this work, but we have to do this work with the voices of the people who are most impacted, and that is also all of you and need need y'all to be at the table. So um, as those opportunities come up, we'll make sure that our community engagement team is also part of that or invite us into community um, to hear directly from people and what's happening. Um, the more that we hear from people, uh, the better job we can do in, in representing folks as well. So that is the opportunity to get involved. And um, you know, uh, vote, vote, vote. Uh, Primary is on August 11th, and then we got the general November 3rd, and folks need to, to show up and show out. And um, that is also one of the ways that we make this a reality um, by ensuring we are electing people who share our values of equity and inclusion.